This is Radical Fit, an eight-month fashion-based program series that embraces craft, making, and DIY while providing a safe space for teens to discuss gender equity and to dream and create through personal expressions of style. The initiative is funded through Project Next Generation, an education technology initiative of the Illinois Secretary of State and State Librarian, Jesse White. Hi, this is Sky Kubaku from Rebirth Garments. I'm here today to show you how to measure yourself. Now, if you don't have a measuring tape, and I have a really nice one that's very long, uh, you can always use a phone charger or anything string-like that isn't stretchy. And you can use that to measure, and then you hold where the ends are, and then you just hold it against a yardstick or a ruler, starting with the bust, which is at the nipple line. You're going to put it all the way around you. And this is an important measurement for binders, bras, things like that. I say bust instead of chest because if I tell people chest, they can interpret that in lots of different ways. But I see bust as a gender neutral term. So yeah, bust is right at the nipple line. Under bust is just right under if, if you have any sort of fat here, then it, it's gonna be under here, like right against your ribs. Overbust, which is a little more unusual, is over the, the breast tissue. I usually need a measurement from your neck, right at your collarbone, to your underbust. So I'll take a measurement from here to here, and that's important for binders and bras. Every once in a while, I'll need one from the shoulder seam. You can see here that there's a seam and lots of clothing has seams here. You can go from the shoulder seam over the apex, which is your nipple, to your underbust. And this is really good for people who have a lot more breast tissue, just so that uh, I can know how big the binder or bra should be. A measurement that I call around the arm, um, or around the armpit, and that is all the way around your arm and around the back. This is important so that I can know how big to make an armhole. For some crop tops like this one, I'll need your neck measurement and just go around shoulder to shoulder measurements. A lot of places they'll do shoulder tip to shoulder tip. What I want is from where your shoulder socket ends like so if i'm moving around my arm and feeling where the joint is to the other one this is good for if there's spaghetti straps tank tops if you want to do the shoulder tip to shoulder tip then uh the straps would fall off so this is where i like for knowing how like where the sleeves or shoulders should end so i do it from here here. Sometimes I'll need it for the back. So a lot of folks have uh, either hunches or they might slouch or they might have any sorts of differences between the front and the back. So then I will also need shoulder to shoulder in the back. So you'll probably need a friend for this one, but I'll try to do it. It's kind of just in the same line as where the front shoulder is, and I'm gonna do it from here to here. There is a lot of confusion between measurements for your whole lower half of your body. This is because fashion companies like to confuse you, and they'll call things that are the butt, the hips, they'll call the hips, the waist, all sorts of things like that. So we're gonna dispense with any of that past knowledge and we're just gonna do what I am doing. So the natural waist, which I call, I just call the waist, um, is right below your rib cage. And for people who can bend, it is wherever your body can bend. Uh, it's also usually a, a couple inches above your belly button. Uh, never say, that the waist is the thinnest part of your body because this is not true for most people. So this 
is the waist. I call hips right at your hip bones, but above your butt. Some people's butts are smaller than their hips. So I like to get all the measurements so that I don't uh, get confused. But so yeah, right on your, you can feel your hip bones, just right above it. And it's usually just like a couple inches below your belly button. Butt measurement is what is, is whatever is at crotch level. So even if something is, you know, yeah, bigger or smaller, um, above or below, it just should be at your crotch level. So for me, it is the, the biggest part, but that isn't true for a lot of people. So here and yeah, so this is the butt measurement. For upper thigh, I just do in the crease, the straight across. Sometimes I do a bathing suit measurement, which is a little bit more angled. So if you think about it like a bikini cut bathing suit measurement, it goes up here and then around your little butt. Sometimes I need the thickest part of your thigh. So wherever that is. So for me, it's right here. A very important measurement for knowing how long to make clothing is your inseam measurement. So this starts at your crotch. It's usually where all of the seams match, match up in your crotch on like jeans, uh, on a swimsuit, things like that. For me taking my inseam, I will put this right here. Yeah, you don't have to put it like in your crotch. It's better to be like just to the side of it on, on one side, not like in the very middle because the seams will just be in on the side. It won't like, go into you. So uh, I'm wearing pretty tight fitted swimsuit right now. So I'm just going to put it here. And then I'm going to follow the tape measure down to right above my ankle. So it's a 26 inseam. If you cannot um, do what I did and just like, you know, bend over all the way, a trick you can do is hold it here. And then you're going to just slide your hand across the tape measure and then you can let go of the top and then you can do whatever kind of bending you need and just follow it along to the, the top of your ankle. Measuring for the seated figure, aka wheelchair users, folks who use rollators, things like that. You can have the person be seated you have them, or in this case, perhaps a PA, a personal assistant will probably do this, but putting, um, still putting the tape measure the, with the number one starting at, in the crotch area. And then yeah, pretend this leg isn't here because um, <laughs> you wouldn't necessarily have the person do this, but for the video, I need to show it. So, okay, I'm gonna have the number one here. I'm gonna bring it to the knee. And then you're going to pivot and bring it to the ankle. So you can see that I got the same measurement each time. For the seated figure, sometimes it is actually extremely important to get the measurement of like the, the vertical measurement of just the inseam to your knee and then from your knee to your ankle. It can also be important for folks who are seated or folks who have knee, knee braces um, or, or uh, even a, a prosthetic leg measurement to make a prosthetic leg cover uh, to get the measurement right above your knee like this. Sometimes I will actually also need the knee measurement itself. I will also probably need right below the knee at the calf. So this is good for knee braces and knee brace covers. Then we're going to measure 
the calf. So that is just like kind of a little bit more than midway up your leg. So it's not the very center of your leg, it's a little bit higher. And this is not necessarily the, the biggest part of the, the lower leg because there's a lot of folks with muscular dystrophy who where it might be very skinny. And same with thighs. So we'll need calf measurement. And then ankle measurement. This can be very important for people who have prosthetics that I need to make their prosthetic leg cover. Sometimes I will also just need the length of their foot. And this, this will be useful, or the, the prosthetic foot, but and this will be useful in knowing how big I need to make the stocking. If you are getting a prosthetic leg cover, then you will need to give me the measurement of wherever the end of the prosthetic is. My friend Michelle's prosthetic is around here. So uh, imagine Michelle, and you'll need to measure around the top of the prosthetic. This is so I know how, to, how tight the top should be. And then you would need to measure from the top of the prosthetic down to the floor but not then across to the foot. So uh, so yeah, if this was the top of the prosthetic, then you would just go down straight to the floor. For both arms and legs, for some folks, they might have different sizes on each side. This is especially typical with folks with muscular dystrophy. For me, I have a, a slight difference between my arms because my right arm is a lot stronger than the other. Most of that, that type of difference doesn't totally make like a difference with the clothing, but for folks who have like a more extreme difference, it is pretty important. So I will usually need arm length measurement. So I do it from the top of my shoulder, like where the little pointy bone is here. And then I have it fall down to my my wrist. I just need it to the wrist. I don't need it to the tip of your finger. But I will also need the bicep measurement. So for me, it's the biggest part of my arm. So it's right here. Then lots of times I'll need the forearm measurement here. And then the wrist measurement here. Sometimes I will need from the tip of your shoulder to the elbow measurement. So I can walk it down and it is right here. Sometimes I also need from the elbow to your wrist measurement. This is typical for, um, for long evening gloves that I might need <laughs> measurements for. So yeah. Starting at the elbow, you can walk it down to your wrist. So that's these arm measurements. But again, yeah, you could do both sides. And also, I forgot to mention that sometimes when you're measuring your your like neck to under bust or your sh shoulder to under bust, I had a person once who I was making their wedding dress and for spandex it doesn't really matter but for woven fabric it really does matter um so they had recently uh dislocated their arm so then uh, but they didn't know that it had changed their body but i kept on making them a mock-up of their dress and i would measure from the the shoulder seam to their to their nipple to know where the darts should go and then I would just do it on one side and then I would mirror it. And I kept on being like, why are the nipples looking so goofy? Like one looks it, like it was just not fitting right. And then when I finally got to step away from her and look at her when she was in my studio, rather than in the tiny, tiny place that we were doing it, I realized when I looked at her that her shoulders were a, a whole inch different. Uh, and that's why the, the mock-up wasn't fitting. So if possible, it is good to be able to like step away and look 
uh, at the person if you're making it for somebody or yourself to see if you have any parts that are asymmetrical. I mean, we all have asymmetrical parts, but that, that's more of a drastic one because of um, just wanting to make sure that the nipples don't look too wonky in, in like a, a wedding dress. So in that case, I measured from neck or from, from shoulder seam to nipple on one side and then also on the other side. Um, another tip for measuring for shorts is that I, so I might need the inseam, like your full inseam for your leggings and pants, but it can be very helpful for me if you have a particular length of shorts that you want to tell me what kind of inseam you want. So for me, this is an inseam that I like. Uh, so I would measure from here and then just down to the bottom of this. So that's like four and a half inches. For shorts, it might also be important for me to get the out seam, which is this part. The out seam is more important for shorts than it is for pants. I don't usually need it for pants. So if you're like, okay, I want this to be shorts that are, are at my hips or shorts that are at my waist, tell me and just wherever you want it to start, you gotta um, start the tape measure where you want it. So if I want high-waisted shorts, I would start here. And then I would do the out seam to wherever I wanted it to end. And so for me, this is 14. But so, cause it is possible to have a, a longer inseam here and then it could cut up at an angle and be like shorter or like a little, if, if they're really short and have like a, a one inch or two inch inseam, you could really cut it up and make it into like really cheeky booty shorts. Um, so it's just all up to you. When you're making leotards, unitards, bodysuits, any sort of kind of dance wear, uh, swimsuits, it is good to get the neck to crotch measurement. So I start at, well, I actually start at the crotch and then I go up to my neck. And that's my measurement. When you're measuring somebody else, it is really important to have them be fully um, consensual and for you to respect any boundaries. So. Uh, I am going to measure your neck to crotch measurement mm -hmm. to make you a, a body suit. Will you, and you give them the, the one side so that you don't have to go look at the bigger number in their crotch. You give it to them, have them place it at their crotch, and then I go up to the neck, like right between the collarbones. So then I know what it is and I don't have to get up all in somebody's business. <laughs> To take somebody else's inseam, you do the same thing. You give them the number one end, you give it to them, they put it in their crotch, and then I go down and measure to their ankle. That's the perfect way to do that. To do, when you wanna find the neck to waist measurement, like for this crop top, you just go from there and you find kind of uh, where, where Calla would bend Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's like right there. So it's the perfect crop top length, but you can use that for other things. It's important to get that for body suits and swimsuits too, because sometimes uh, it, it just helps you map out the body. So you have the waist measurement and it'll t tell you how low the waist measurement has to be in relation to your neck when you're making the patterns. Check out the rest of the Radical Fit playlist on the U Media Chicago YouTube channel. We would love to see the projects you are working on, so use the hashtags CPL Radical Fit, U Media, and U Media Chicago, and tag us on Instagram and Twitter at U Media Chicago. Or find us on our Facebook, U Media at Chicago Public Library.